I'm not a huge scotch drinker. I mean, I've dabbled a few times, but my main area of concern and drinking is most certainly in the Irish whiskey category, obviously. Hence the YouTube channel and the whiskey reviews that aren't really reviews. But this got me thinking, especially from someone who wants to get into drinking scotch and learn a little bit more about our whiskey related cousins and brethren. What are some key differences between Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey? Without getting too technical, let's find out. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian here in Chrissy's Bar Kenny. Hope you're keeping well. So again, this is another video I've wanted to do for a long while, mainly because I get to flex my research muscle and sit in front of my computer for hours upon end, reading and ignoring every other aspect of things that I should be doing in my life. Nerd alert. But what are some core differences between Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey? And I'm not going to talk too much about flavor profiles here, although that is important. And I'm not going to dive too much into the history of each because honestly, I don't have the energy to get all that info crammed in and under 10 minutes. There's a lot of history there. I wanted to know if I was starting out drinking whiskey and I wanted to know the key differences between the two, what do I think would be the most important points that I would want to know, right? Makes sense, Whiskey Chaser, here to save you some time on the research end of things. Although if you wanted to, you know, drink research, by all means, go ahead. So let's get started. Firstly, and kind of the most obvious one, in order for Irish whiskey to be called Irish whiskey, it must be distilled on the island of Ireland, and that includes the North. It must also be matured only in Ireland, in wooden casks, key word there, wooden. Similarly for Scotch whiskey, it can, be, it, can, it can only be Scotch if it's distilled in Scotland and matured in Scotland in oak casks. Another key word there. Both styles have to be matured but for a minimum of three years in order for it to be considered whiskey in their respective countries. There is a ton more information on this in each spirit's technical file, which I will link below. So to sum up, both Irish and Scotch have GI status or geographical indicative status. What the hell is GI status, you ask? A geographical indication is a sign used on goods that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities, reputation, or characteristics that are essentially attributable or attributable to that place of origin. While both have many similarities, there are, of course, some differences in their technical files, such as the use of oak casks for Scotch and wood casks for Irish, and also the use of enzymes. Irish whiskey allows the use of enzymes while Scotch does not. Next, and one that's kind of shocked me that any of the videos of research or research that I've done on this topic hasn't really turned up, big one, whiskey regions. Ireland has absolutely no whiskey regions. Currently, we are still trying to recover from our massive collapse of our whiskey industry over 100 years ago. Had we continued to dominate the world stage, yes, you heard me right there, dominate, Ireland did once dominate the whiskey landscape around the world, we could have possibly de developed into regions, but in current times, we don't. Uh, Scotch, however, has six whiskey regions, each region having their own flavor profiles and specific characteristics. They are the Highlands, Speyside, Lowlands, Campbelltown, Isla, and the islands. Some people say five regions, but there are six. Keep this in mind next time you're thinking about Scotch or Irish whiskey. A common misconception about Scotch is that it's all peated, and that's simply not true. The region that is more known for its peated whiskey in Scotland is Isla. Um, most famous whiskey distilleries are Ardbeg, Laphroaig, Lagavulin, and Brookladdick. Another misconception is Ireland doesn't distill peated whiskey. Again, Simply not true. Peter whiskey at one stage used to be a very common thing in Ireland, and it's starting to make a serious comeback. Sleeve League Distillery, Cooley, Teelings, Cologne, and a few others around the country all have at least one peated whiskey offering in current times. 
When deciding between Scotch and Irish, whiskey types is another factor to consider between the two regions. Scotch, for example, boasts five distinct categories of whiskey. Single malt, which it's obviously most famous for. Single grain, blended malt, blended grain, and then there's your blended whiskey. Ireland, on the other hand, has four general styles of whiskey. Currently, I say this because the technical file has not been yet been updated, but to the best of my knowledge, there is a slight variation or there are coming slight variations on the following that are considered blends currently. But the four main styles are single malt, are pot malt, pot still, grain, and blended whiskey. The variations under that or subcategories, I believe, are vatted malt and vatted pot still whiskey types. But I'm not entirely sure do they fall under the term of blend? or just pot still or malt whiskeys instead of single malt and single pot still whiskeys. So maybe someone who's watching this that is in the know can clarify that one for me in the comment section below. If you have any information on that, sharing is caring. Now, obviously while single malt whiskey is what sets Scotch apart from the majority of the world whiskeys, it is pot still Irish whiskey that Ireland is famous for. And Ireland was made famous for it back in the 1800s. Irish was once the most popular whiskey in the world because of pot still Irish whiskey. What makes pot still whiskey so unique is its inclusion of unmalted barley, which gives both a distinct spicy flavor to the whiskey and influences the texture by giving the whiskey a distinctly creamy mouthfeel. I did do a full video on this before that goes into great depths about the spirit and I'll leave a card for that above and a link below if you would like to watch it. It's a good watch. It's very informative, lots of dates. Lots of dates. This leads me into another misconception about pot still Irish whiskey that it came about because of the malt tax of 1785. This is somewhat true, but not entirely. There is evidence currently that there was a common trade knowledge in Ireland before 1785 of the inclusion of unmalted barley in whiskey distilling, distilling, and there is more evidence being found as time moves on. People, as in Finan O'Connor, are currently doing Trojan work in Ireland, uncovering a lot of information about old style mash bills and the likes. So to say pot still Irish whiskey came about because of a tax isn't entirely true. Again, check that video out about pot still Irish whiskey and you can hear all about it. I go into depth real deep. Okay, so the next difference you want to know about um, Scotch and Irish is triple distillation versus double distillation. So not all Irish whiskey is triple distilled, regardless of what you've heard. Yes, a lot of Irish whiskey is predominantly triple distilled, but certainly not all of it. There are plenty of distilleries using double distillation in Ireland. Triple distillation is said to give Irish whiskey a little bit of a smoother mouthfeel. It's not as robust as Scotch would say, but uh, I have nothing really to compare that to. I just kind of read that on a few different things online. Another falsehood is that all Scotch is double distilled. While this is also untrue, the majority of Scotch malt whiskey would be double distilled, but there are some triple distillations happening also, just obviously not as much. I feel like this is kind of turning into one of those videos where you quash some or squash some of the rumors of so-called facts about Scotch and Irish whiskey. Yeah. I'm just keeping it real for everyone and spitting some hardcore truths there. Which brings me on to my next subject. If you aren't subscribed already and you like any of that information, make sure you do subscribe and like the video, thumbs up. Somehow this helps with the YouTube algorithm. I don't know, technology, I'm trusting it. I release videos every week on all things that are Irish whiskey, mostly Irish whiskey, all Irish whiskey. Just make sure you're subbed and liked. Subscribe, sound. Finally. The last bit, and I saved this one for last because a lot of people tend to get this wrong. And this is something that is interesting and that I wanted to know since, you know, the difference between Scotch and Irish or general whiskey is the E in the spelling of whiskey. Scotch spells it without an E, Irish with an E. Let's clear this up once and for all. So Irish whiskey up until the late 1820s was mostly spelt without the E. There was some instances where the E was used in spellings and it wasn't until Aeneas Coffey invented the column still and it was adopted by the Scots because of its economic performance that Dublin distilleries believed anything from a column still was to be an inferior product to Irish whiskey. And in fact, they didn't believe it was whiskey at all at the time. So for Dublin distilleries to stand out, at that time, they believed their product was superior. They added an E into the word, which was merely a marketing stunt. 
We're living a lie, people. In current day, some distilleries and whiskies in Ireland spell whiskey with an E and some without. There is no law governing which is the right or wrong spelling to use. In fact, the Irish whiskey technical file clearly states that it can be spelled either way. So again, another falsehood that all Irish whiskey is spelled with an E and scotch without an E. Now you know why. So those couple of points that I made there are the most obvious differences between the two spirits for someone who is really, really kind of starting out in the whiskey world and wants a quick breakdown of the two. I can't stress that enough. We would literally be here all day if we started to go down the tasting route or distillation and maturation differences or difference between the stills or climate differences. I don't know that I say that or the history and look, you get the point. So a broad overview is what this is about. It was along my whiskey journey that I started figuring out some of these points and it caught my interest and said, I would have liked to have known that from the start. Oh, uh, just one thing on the history of Irish whiskey because I'm Irish and living in Ireland and I have to do it. There is evidence that dates back to 1324 of distillation in Ireland in the Red Book of Ossery, while the earliest records of distillation in England dates back to 1494. And before anyone gets their knickers in a twist, yes, Irish whiskey was mentioned in the 1405 Annals of Clan McNoise, but the 1324 account written by Bishop de Ledra is a more accurate reference point. Now you know. And in the words of Jeremy Clarkson on that bombshell, we say good night. Chat to you soon. Chaser out. Slancha.